Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works and happy 4th of July. Uh, this will be a small little video um, of building some booster chairs for a project that I'm working on. The project is restoring an old 16 inch round drill press vise that was made by the Modern Machine Tool Company established in 1916. I've already got a new base machined and welded welded up. It'll be a standalone video just for restoring the vise. But basically, why I'm having to make the booster chairs, riser blocks, is the main shaft that supports this whole vise is stuck in there pretty good. I'm not sure if it's uh, was cast right in it or not, but I put pretty good force on it and rather than taking a chance of cracking anything I just decided to make make up something where I could put it in the mill I needed to support those two rails underneath and I needed about eight and a half inches tall These holes here will all be filled in before I machine it. I want to machine that whole top surface to clean all that up to me, that's just uh, some abuse for somebody's over years just, just being on it. I'm making an assumption that probably tapping the, a, a chuck or drill bit into the Morse taper adapters is probably what could have did it. But anyway, I just want to clean that up. First thing I did is went out to our uh, scrap bin and found some pistons. These are out of a 342 Caterpillar natural gas engine and I already got the holes drilled. The holes are kind of drilled off center so uh, when they're on the Bridgeport mill the holes will line up with the T-slots. Here I'm machining the uh, heads of the pistons. They're a concave style piston, um, kind of a reverse, <laughs> reverse dome. Um, the more I machine off the head of the piston, the wider the uh, pattern gets, which increases the footprint that will sit on the mill. You can see by my insert that I grind it and get as much use as I can out of them. Here I got them sitting side by side, just making sure the holes line up with the T-slots. The two tools I used to get rid of the bulk of the material um, was the uh, zip wheel on the grinder and then finished it off with the sawzall. I think that was a point right there where I decided I'm going to call them booster chairs. I do run a really fine glass media in my cabinet, um, but with aluminum it still leaves a little fuzzy finish. You know, just the fact that the impacting of the glass bead, you know, does give it a little, little rough surface. There, I was just smoothing it out a little bit. This bridge port here, uh, this is actually the first job at work I have uh, did on it. Um, I've always had two bridge ports at work. We replaced one with this one. Not really knowing uh, how true it is, never put a dial indicator or anything on it. You know, I had a couple choices. I could have just lined up all four of these pistons and bolted them down and just made one call all the way across. Or I could just pick one spot on the table and uh, just do one at a time. 
you know, once the settings were set, the quill was locked and the knee was locked. Sometimes picking up any imperfections, uh, not much, hard to beat, hard to beat your hand. It's amazing what you can just feel, right? Just going over the surface with the bare hand. I decided to make these uh, chairs, riser blocks, where I have two different levels. Um, I already got the top machine, and those will be for machining the vice piece. I decided to machine the lower sections of them and make them all the same. Who knows, I could have a job where they'll come in handy, so since I've got it set up in a bridge port, now's the time to do it.
this is kind of a quick uh, rough way of just squaring up the uh, the pistons before I machine the bottoms um, all I'm doing is um, spacing the two outside pistons the same distance just eyeballing from the slot on the table and then just making sure that all four upper contact points are square up against the straight edge and for what I'm doing that's plenty plenty good enough Well, I kind of dummy them up here just to give you an idea how they're going to work. But the chairs will just bolt right down to the table. And then the, the main vice part body will just bolt right down to them, setting my clearances, you know, where I need. And then I machine the, the top of the vise. Well, I guess I should say machine the top rails of the vise. I'll probably end up grinding the, the main part of the top of the vise. Yeah, being that this vice is a fairly rare vice, you know, I decided to go to the extra trouble to try to fix it up nice. This is totally an assumption, but I'm kind of thinking that this is probably how they put the, you know, <laughs> put, put the marks in it. I don't know what else would have done that. Okay, by milling the top off of the vice, it's going to change my, you know, the center bolt height. So I thought, all right, what am I going to do uh, to correct that? And what I've decided is to get everything back to center, I'm going to go ahead and machine both sides of the movable part of the vise, and then I'm going to put brass inserts in them. So it'll actually, when it's done, it'll actually have brass, uh, brass sections sliding on the main part of the vise, and it'll keep my center hole. Uh, back to the original center. I want to thank all my my new subscribers that's taken the time to watch my videos and uh, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it very much. I hope I can keep bringing content that somebody gets something out of it. Uh, once again, thank you very much. And thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing.